Professor Al has already uh, mentioned quite a, a number of the topics that we want to talk about in this panel discussion. Uh, things like education, creating a safe space for innovation, integrated industry. Um, so now we're, we're going to have a panel discussion here and after a while I'd uh, also like to bring in the audience and go into a Q&A. Um, so if anything catches your ear, remember that question until your time has come. Uh, so let's see a show of hands. Uh, who out there thinks that German products stand for quality? That's quite a lot of hands. Maybe almost half. <laughs> Some up here. Who feels confident that German products will still stand for quality 20 years from now? There's still quite a few hands out there. Okay. So we're starting from a basis of confidence. That's good. <laughs> Um, now, I listened to Angela Merkel's speech at the opening ceremony yesterday, and uh, one thing that she said was that Germany and Europe have a chance to make their mark in this world and get ahead again, or stay ahead, depending on where you stand, uh, through integrated industry. Uh, as Professor Ala said, that is the buzzword of this, of the mess of this year. Uh, so I'd like to start off with that, and I was going to start off with uh, Dr. Bodem. Uh, because you also spoke of uh, integrated industry. Can you take us back to how can integrated industry help German companies make sure that Made in Germany still stands for quality? So, what that means, let me start with why we need that kind of integrated um, industry. Um, the issue is that the mass production is not always that what is really needed from the customer, customer perspective. And I think it's extremely important that innovation is made for the people, for, for everybody who is also a user. So what that means, everybody needs not high volume standard products, he's asking more for personalized uh, individual products. To manufacture that, it's for sure, it's a challenge. What that means is, the factory should change from one product to a different one that more or less is extremely quick and very efficient so that the cost of the uh, manufacturing process is under control. To do so, we can do it only by um, bringing much more intelligence in the manufacturing process and that the worker or the blue colors are not overloaded. Okay. I think it's extremely important that the innovation and the technique is used to make it much easier than in the past. So, so quality is not just the product that you get in the end. It starts with the production process. It starts with the design process. Even the design process, or the uh, before in my uh, interaction is, it's extremely important that during the design process, um, all what is needed to manufacture later on uh, quality is implemented in that stage. I think that is something that uh, Mr. Schricke also talked about, about um, how it's, it's not just about the quality of the product, but it's all already in the design and the engineering process. But how, how does a company make sure that, uh, that the design and engineering stage guarantees quality? I think we have to adapt our quality system more and more um, for the development of connected solutions. Um, what is the difference between develop a connected solution instead of producing a part for a market? A part you can measure. You can measure it, you have measuring tools, but if you have an engineering process which is connecting a lot of industries together and a lot of robots together, we need other tools. So tools like uh, maturity models, uh, we use them for example for software development, and software development is integrating a lot of the how from a lot of uh, partners and often we are integrating safety relevant functions in our products, so it's very important that we have a very good feeling um, how our engineers are working in terms of quality. So I think this will be a change. And another change is reducing time for engineering our products. So time to market will be shorter and shorter in future. And I have brought with me an example from a Korean uh, 
a car maker, and if you're looking to the engineering phases, um, he started 2002 with 24 months um, since the model fix, and now he needs 2013. He needs five. Uh, sorry, yes, 15 months, and now he needs nine months. So he has reduced drastically the uh, engineering time, and I think this will be a challenge we have in Germany, and we need to cope this. But we have good chances. We have of course, a good measure, a network, and we are working good together. And this is going to be a success factor. So it's reducing engineering time and uh, building a lot into the engineering process to make sure that the end product that you get is where you want it to be. But you work for the world's biggest automotive supplier. Um, I wonder what does it mean for smaller companies? Professor Alas, you are a managing partner at two smaller companies. Uh, is this feasible for small companies? What can you do? Yes, uh, everything is feasible, what we can discuss with bigger companies, but it's uh, a scaling thing. First of all, we are talking about uh, one-of-a-kind manufacturing up to, let's say, 100,000 products, equal products per year. And this is a different kind of production that we put into place, because we have to shift from one type of a product to the other type of product very fast so that we have to manufacture 100 different uh, products per year, but with these quantities I mentioned. The next step, it, it's the same as I think with Bosch. If we think in terms of the design process, we have the same hurdles because we have to be much faster, we have to do it the first time right, this is a quality issue, and then we have to go ahead with a very clever type of an idea so that we can be much faster than our competitors. And in this case, we face the same types of the problems that might be uh, issues of Bosch, that might also be issues of Boeing and uh, Airbus, for example. Uh, see the Dreamliner today. They have to be very fast on the market, and what happened? Uh, all of a sudden, they had an energy problem with product that normally we would not expect to put some problems into an airplane. And this is what we have to face, that uh, being much faster, we have to take into account every quality measures that we might use to improve this process as well and to avoid uh, failures, drawbacks that might come out of the speeding up of the procedure without taking into account the quality level measures that we have to introduce into these types of products. Do you think that you have less of a buffer, less of an ability to fail? Is it easier for big companies to just try something and see whether it works out? What do you think? No. We have the same uh, border conditions as the big companies. We have to be as fast as they are. Uh, they are thinking in a higher quantity, so they have other um, hurdles that they have to overcome, other obstacles than we. But nevertheless, it's the same type of the processes that we should put into the manufacturing processes, into the people, into the education of the people, into the quality management. So it's, it's rather similar, although it's different on the scale. Okay, so, uh, so getting to products standing for quality is the same for large and for small companies. So we're on a level playing field. Um, but I think before we continue, we should probably talk about what we mean when we talk about quality. Uh, is what we mean by quality the same as what we meant 10 years ago, and will it be the same in 20 years? Now, uh, Professor Boom, you've talked about um, quality by Mercedes as opposed to quality made in Germany. What do you mean when you talk about quality? Yeah, this is a very difficult question because uh, if you talk about quality, you should always talk about the perception of quality by the customer. Like uh, fake rates, like appearance of a product may be seen from a customer completely. So we have to understand that uh, the perception of the customer regarding quality is changing and unfortunately, fortunately, is improving. So. But people, customers accepted 10, 20 years ago, they do not accept today. Meaning failure rates, meaning appearance, meaning noise issues. Therefore, it is getting more strict year by year. So, uh, so it used to be that quality for a customer just meant it's not going to break. 
and now it's... No, it, it is much more. So the, the, the quality, as we discuss it, is more or less five issues. The first is the concept quality. Is the product well done? Is it well engineered uh, concept okay? The second is uh, look and feel quality. The appearance, the smell, the noise of the of closing doors, of uh, adjusting the seat. This is a more emotional uh, kind of quality. And then, of course, you have the reliability. It should not fail. It should just run. And uh, another aspect is also sales and service quality. How do you sell the product? How is the customer uh, treated at the sales point of sales? This is also important. And then, um, last but not least, of course, the durability and the long time quality. So you can see these nice Mercedes classic cars. So many famous vehicles among them. And this is after 10 years, 15 years, still running. So therefore we have five aspects and uh, different customer groups. And it's important to focus on all of them and not only to one. It sounds like it's becoming harder and harder to produce something that we can call a quality product. <laughs> yeah, it is, definitely. But let me mention one thing, this is only related to cars. I have another good example if you talk about uh, house heating systems. So in the generation ago, 30 years, 40 years ago, heating could fail. So, uh, and then, well, the purpose, and was okay. Today, nobody would accept this. If you have a house heating, it should run 10 years without any failure. So, it's getting harder and harder, not only for automotive industry. Yeah, I could see that. I know that um, Professor Weinberg deals with issues, with problems like that all the time. Your teams uh, at the uh, School of Design Thinking have been looking at various problems for how to make sure that things work, things work better, things work more efficiently. Um, and I know that you also have some interesting ideas about what quality is, if you can tell us something about it. Yeah, actually I was raising my hand uh, while you were asking uh, in 20 years from now is there Germany still seen as a quality place and I was saying, saying yes but my question would be um, how does how do, how do we define quality in 20 years and I've seen a significant change as you were describing already um, uh, one example I just came up with the last weeks and months. So we have just preparing a project which we are doing next semester, starting next week, with a large German manufacturer for laundry washing machines. And they are very well, well known for quality. And they are, if you go to their website, you see this is a quality project that lasts for 20 years. So this is their quality statement. I asked one of my students, she's 25 or so, and I was asking, if you would buy a washing machine, does that statement enhance your your decision and she was saying what uh, i have to buy a product which lasts for 20 years i'm used to this kind of products which i can renew like every five years my mobile phone and on my computer so um this, this is not a this is not a, an issue anymore and this is exactly the problem which we are trying to tackle with that company so how to um, how how to do the next step on the other hand, this company has an incredible machine. They have a laundry washing machine with just one knob, on and off. And uh, this knob, and the, all the functionality is in your mobile phone. So you have everything that you need personalized to yourself. The problem is, they couldn't sell the, the product. They put it in the, in, the, in the store, right next to a machine with 10 knobs. So people are saying, oh, that machine has 10 knobs, that's much better. So just one knob. Even functionality is much more personal. So we we try to tackle that kind of problem and try to also to find new definitions of quality in the future. And I think it has a lot to do with personalization, with uh, which which is able, which we are able to do now in a network society. So we all have our mobile phones, we all have our systems, which are highly intelligent. They are so intelligent that we can fly with uh, Apollo to the moon with that thing which we have in the pocket. So why don't we enhance that? Why don't we bring this kind of personalized quality more into the products? And I think this is this is one of the issues we'll tackle through the next uh, next semester. Okay, so it's uh, it's not 
So quality is about more than does it work or does it not work. Um, but as you were saying, sometimes there'll be a washing machine that has 10 knobs, so people will choose that one instead of the one that has only one because it's an unfamiliar product. Um, but I'd like to get more to the specifics of what our company's doing specifically to make sure that quality made in Germany still means something in 20 years. In this case, it might be, how do they make sure that we want this washing machine? Or that they make the washing machine that we want? Um, in the case of some companies that don't make washing machines, but make more uh, technical items, um, how, uh, how do you think that your customers define quality, and what is your company doing, Hatching Technology Group, uh, to make sure that the quality that your customers want is what you're delivering? What we already heard is that quality doesn't mean only is it breaking or not. It means much more. And I think the first point, especially if a customer should decide for a long-term running product, that he has to be sure that the product is really innovative and state-of-the-art also five or ten years from now. That means it should be really the leader and so the company should be stand also for a, a innovation leadership. That's number one. Number two, how you do it, does it that you have from the starting, from the beginning onwards, that kind of reliability. And what we are doing is we're using our products internally in our own factories day by day before we start and enter with that product in the market. And I think that that's a very powerful um, option to ensure that all these maybe not yet completely or, uh, qualified products are pre, let's say, tested before they are in the market. So you make sure that the products that you sell are the products that you would want to use for your company as well. Um, you also said that you need to make sure that the products are, are cutting, a, cutting edge and are innovative, but how do you do that? I mean, how do you, how do you see into the future and say this is still going to be cutting edge a year from now? Can we do that? That is, I think that is the challenge and that is then why, what means innovation. Not just having a good idea, but also bringing that idea at the right time to the market and bring it to a business success. And how you do it um, was the question. I think it's extremely important that you collaborate and work together with universities, with uh, scientific institutes, to ensure that the latest uh, news, the latest uh, new materials, new processes are used for your product. That means one thing is the design, but all the other topics, nanotechnologies, special coatings, and 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 for corrosion resistance, or or or, that you can use that. So working close with universities and institutes to make sure that we have the latest technology. But uh, is Germany currently set up to do that, um, Professor Alas? Uh, what is your take on that? Do you think, from what you've seen, that Germany has the expertise uh, that high-tech and specialized companies like yours need? Yes, I'm very optimistic to this, because otherwise I would not have had uh, these two companies. Uh, I think uh, we have a good future if we stick to our strategy, if we focus on our skills and our strength, and not on our weakness, and if we try to improve our cooperation with our suppliers and with our customers. So if we are talking about the open community, for example, this should be the buzzword for us in the future so that we can cooperate on a much higher level than we do it today. And uh, if you were, uh, you were asking the question for 20 years ahead, um, we have forgotten one aspect in this discussion. This is the societal needs and the governmental regulations. If I want to try to manufacture today a refrigerator that I've manufactured 10 years ago, I would fail because I would use the wrong gases. On the other hand, if I would go ahead with a certain type of a washing machine, I would not need the energy efficiency that we have to meet today. So we have not to think about 20 years, 
uh, to have the same types of products, but we have to think about to focus on our products, to focus on our processes, and how to improve them also from the quality point of level with regard to societal needs and to governmental regulations, if they are there. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point, that uh, the products that we make now may be very different from the products that we're going to have in the future or will need to have. I think I see someone raising his hand. I think Professor Weinbach has an opinion on this one. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I think I think what we, what we all can do is to learn a little bit more from the software industry. Not the bad part, but I think the, the interesting part of software industry, software products, is that they are never finished. They are always a version. They are always version 2.1, 2.2. Did you know 3.0 will be there sometimes? And so the whole software industry, when they are developing something, they are not thinking of a final product. They are think, thinking about a process. Thinking about a process, and they are constantly iterating. They are constantly trying to improve what what they are doing. And this is hard to apply to a hardware industry. But the the thinking behind it is probably not too bad because the other thing what they do, and I think we we all suffer from from this through Microsoft, um, while they were testing our Windows, they were involving the users to improve the products. Because they were, they were giving out an unfinished product some years ago, and they still do it sometimes. And, uh, and then they had the users complain about that, and users were, were giving, the, uh, giving the, the feedback. And so that helped them to improve the product all the time, since more than 30 years now. And I think the hardware industry is still not at that step. They're not they're not keen enough, open enough to say, hey, let's think in kind of versioning, and let's think in not being finished with that product, but see, think in how can that be improved, also incorporating our customers, which means come into a co-creation process, which we are discussing with a lot of companies in, at this school right now. Um, they want to establish this kind of collaboration, this kind of uh, process which is involving the knowledge of their customers, also big clients, not just the, the, the private customers, in order to come up with better MRT scanners, for example. We just did a project with a large company as well. And we didn't find, we don't have the answers how that should look like, but I think we are encouraging this kind of process. Let's, let's talk about that thinking in versions. I mean, I know that software companies, they'll put out something and then there'll be updates and patches and version 3.508. Um, but what does that mean for companies, for instance, that make car parts? Um, Mr. Schrecke. <laughs> First of all, I think in the future we will not distinguish between hardware and software. I completely with you. Why? Uh, because we are putting always software on our hardware. Uh, normally, a product is we are selling the hardware, the software, and services. So that is a product. And quality, we need for all three elements. If we are changing software, we are influencing the hardware. So we have to consider also what does it mean for the hardware. And I think that is uh, for the future the challenge. How we deal with that? Um, let me give you another ex aspect into the discussion. We are talking about software, we are talking of fast innovation groups, we are talking about explorative projects and explorative products. But we are talking also, if you are going back to the automotive industry, how we ensure safety functions. We all heard about the problems one very well-known car manufacturer had in the United States in recent years with quality. And so I think the safety aspect must be considered and therefore we need special rules where I think we cannot go by versioning from one step to the other, but we have other fields where we can, in a way, use something like try and error. Uh, but we should also consider fail fast, fail cheap. And we need to have a very good corrective action process want to take the risk for projects like this. And I think this is this complete story is not so easy that you can say they're just versioning software. So I think But you do uh, 
you do invest in, in possible failures. You say, well, we'll try something. I mean, they're not possible failures before, but uh, you're willing to go out on a limb, try something, and if it fails, at least you haven't you know, spent billions on it. I think we are doing it together with our customers. And what we are using is that we go for little projects with predefined customers where we get a feedback from the customers and the customer do understand that he would like to learn. But I think to bring this message across before you go with a project like this is very important because otherwise you are suffering uh, by having uh, bad quality feedback from the market. So that communication is very important. But I think we need that in future because um, engineering cycles are so fast meanwhile. And the pressure, especially from China, is so big on us that we need also to think about these kind of solutions and these kind of processes. So we have both. We have the explorative world, but on the other side we have the mass production, um, where we have to ensure that every part is like the other. Quality is always constant, constantly good. I would also like to hear about this from Professor Boom, but I saw Professor Ala's hand go up. He's itching to say something. For me, it's uh, very interesting to see that if we are going into uh, new products, we will not, to any extent, allow for failures. We will not deliver low quality onto the market, because this will hurt our image. So before we will start to go on the market, we have to test it perhaps with customers. We have target customers where we can deal with uh, innovations that are not just innovations in the sense we put it normally. We try to innovate, we try to go ahead with, and then we might also have some parts that are not optimized from the design, not optimized from the manufacturing, but it will be a starting point before we enter into the last level that goes into the production and where we then go with the start of production, but we will never allow for failures to occur at this phase. This would be disastrous. So this is an issue of we need innovation to have, to, to make sure that quality made in Germany still means something in the future. To have innovation, we have to experiment, but we cannot allow that to, you know, or not we, you, you cannot allow that to mean that uh, you're giving out unfinished products because then quality will not mean as much anymore. Um, how, how do you see that uh, coming from Mercedes-Benz? I mean, Mercedes-Benz has a very uh, quality-driven image, I think. Um, how do you uh, get innovation and quality together? Yeah, I think... Uh as Mr. Schlickel said, there are certain uh, functions, safety relevant features, there is no discussion. So this is 100% zero failure rate and end of story. This has to be done and of course uh, to achieve this there are specific processes installed and uh, quality systems are established at the suppliers and our side there is a very huge testing and this is so far clear. However, I mentioned before fields of concept quality or a look at field quality. And these are areas, and I fully agree with uh, what you said, that in this field it is more about the customer perception. It's difficult to, to make a strict okay, not okay, because it depends on the customer driving with the vehicle, whether he says, I like this, this is good quality, or I don't like it not so good and uh, in this field I think we have to be more open and we of course already started we have discussions with customers we have clinics we have uh, intensive uh, investigations about different countries uh, because it's not always the same customers in Germany some think is okay some Chinese may think ah, I don't like this the noise is not okay the smell is not okay of the car so the quality image is different and therefore in this field we have to be very open and uh, then we can establish this quality by Mercedes is outstanding for all aspects and not only for the safety relevant and, and uh, reliability and durability issues. Okay, I'd, I'd like to 
get to Q and A in a second. Just uh, to follow up on what you said, um, you're saying that quality doesn't even mean the same thing for people in different regions. Uh, one aspect of a car, one function may be fine for people in Germany, but people in China don't like it because it's it's not what they're used to, or it's not what's cool, what's acceptable there. Um, how how do you deal with that? Do you do you change the product on depending on the market? No, of course not. As I said, uh, um, a Mercedes Benz is always identical quality level in each five aspects as I said, wherever it comes from, from which plant, and this is clear. However, um, we have to understand these different aspects and have to adjust our Mercedes standards also to customer perception in China or in the United States. So it's unfortunately always adding something and not substituting something. I see, so in order for quality made in Germany, or in your case quality made by Mercedes, uh, to mean what it does and to keep meaning that, you have to keep adding aspects of quality. Okay. Um, before we do the Q and A, pop this on mine back. You had. Uh, did your hand just go up? I, I don't want to make up a full discussion, but um, looking especially at the car industry, um, I think what will happen through the next years is a, is a kind of fundamentally rethinking of how we do private transportation. And it's not just how the new car, how the latest car looks like, it's, it's the question for me, how do we move ourselves from A to B, what kind of vehicle are we using? And I was highly impressed by the workshop we did with Google. I never expected Google to be a car company, never. But they have been, what they, we did a two-day workshop together with some uh, innovation guys from Google from all over the world. And they were telling us about their activities um, towards driverless car. And they are the most advanced, as far as I, I could see it so far, to, to do the research about the car, the car, which allows yourself to just lean back and not be the driver, because the, dr the car knows that you want to go to a grocery and he, the car knows also the way to the grocery because the car is, is owning that navigation system. So that ends, ended up in the dis, discussions of, so a car looks totally different. It's not a thing where you have a driver's seat and you have, like, it might be a round thing, it might be something fully new. And uh, what I think is, what I think could be one of the key quality issues in Germany is to, to be fast enough to think different things, very, very different things together and to, to connect it with each other in a way which was not done before. And uh, it's, it's just it's two days sitting together with Google was opening up my eyes and was thinking, why do I not hear these kind of messages out of Germany? And why is a German, Sebastian Thun, the head of driverless cars activity at Google? Yes, why is he not doing that here in Germany? Um, I, Germany and German engineering has that, that feeling of quality, that quality image. But I don't know whether you would all agree with me, but it doesn't necessarily have the image of being fast and agile as much as Google. 